now we will talk about the anthrax so anthrax is a disease that is caused by a bacillus group of bacteria that is caused by bacillus group of bacteria or more specifically the bacillus anthracis bacillus anthracis causes the anthrax now and that anthrax can be of different types like cutaneous anthrax pulmonary anthrax based on the entry of the bacillus anthracis different types of manif manifestations occur in the anthrax disease okay so as we have learned that anthrax is caused by bacillus anthracis so we also should know about the characteristics of the bacillus anthracis so here we see the characteristic feature of the bacillus anthracis that it is a gram positive rod it has a central spore it has a central spore see here it is uh, not like the clostridium where the spore was subterminal and it has a non bulging spore just opposite to the clostridium where there was bulging spore and it is a obligate aerobe just opposite to the clostridium which was obligate anaerobe so these features are just opposite to the clostridium bacteria that it is a gram positive rod okay that was also gram positive this is also gram positive so there is no difference in this point but in other points there is uh, complete contrast with the clostridium so bacillus anthracis is having central spore having non bulging spore and is a obligate anaerobic organism that is it needs oxygen for its growth cannot grow without oxygen okay now anthrax uh, from historical point of view anthrax is a very important bacteria why why is it so important because anthrax was the first bacterium to be seen under the microscope okay this was the first bacterium to be seen under the microscope and this was the first bacterium to be isolated in pure culture and in the first chapter that we have learned about the Koch's postulates those Koch's postulates were based on this anthrax itself okay uh, uh, those postulates were based on this bacillus anthracis because this bacillus anthracis was the first bacterium to be isolated in pure culture media okay it was isolated first in the pure culture media that's why uh, and was first isolated by the Koch Robert Koch so he was given he has given the for his four famous four Koch postulates and those four Koch postulates were based on this bacillus anthracis and also it is the first live attenuated vaccine that was produced in this uh, human era was against the anthrax that was the anthrax vaccine that was the first live attenuated bacterial vaccine produced in the human era so anthrax uh, from historical point of view anthrax is a very important bacilli or a rod okay this these are the following historical points with regard to the bacillus anthracis now coming to the virulence factor of the anthrax what is the virulence factor of the anthrax so virulence of the anthrax and rather bacillus anthracis is due to the anthrax toxin anthrax toxin is a tripartite toxin what is meaning of tripartite that means it has got three fragments okay those three fragments are the edema factor then protective factor and the lethal factor these are the three fragments of the anthrax toxin the edema factor activates the adenyl cyclase and uh, rather it acts as the adenyl cyclase okay this edema factor acts as the adenyl cyclase and causes edema around the wound that is produced by the bacillus anthracis and the protective factor facilitates the entry of the fragments or into the host cell and the lethal factor causes the cell death uh, which is evident from its name itself now the toxin this tripart tripartite toxin is synthesized by a very famous plasmid that is plasmid px01 okay uh, and if this plasmid is lost the bacterium will become non pathogenic because all the pathogenic feature of this bacteria is due to this tripartite toxin which is coded by this plasmid px01 and once this plasmid gets lost then the bacteria will become non pathogenic it will be non harmful to anyone okay it will become non harmful next is the anthrax capsule 
why is anthrax capsule so important bro so anthrax capsule is very important because it has got some polypeptide constituents not polypeptide constituents rather it is fully made up of polypeptide okay it is made up of polyglutamate amino acid i mean it is made up of glutamate mini glutamine amino acid so they together called as the polyglutamate okay and this is the only capsule which is polypeptide in nature other all other capsules in any other bacteria you see everywhere the capsule is made up of the heteropolysaccharide that is the saccharides not the peptides but the anthrax capsule is very unique it is made up of the polypeptide okay and that polypeptide is glutamate polyglutamate and again this capsule is coded by a very famous uh, plasmid that is called as the plasmid x02 okay so again this also becomes very important uh, virulence factor because it is made up of polypeptide and due to its unique uh, nature of the capsule it becomes a very important point for mcq as well okay now coming to the types of anthrax as i have told earlier as well that according to the entry of the the bacillus anthracis it causes different types of manifestation or different types of anthrax so the anthrax disease can be divided into three types of uh, in three types that is the cutaneous anthrax when the anthrax disease is occurring on the skin that is called as cutaneous anthrax and it is also called as the hyde potter's disease okay hyde potter's disease why because it is seen in the dock workers in the butchers who carry the animal skins on their bare backs so when these uh, dock workers or these butchers carry the skin of the animals whenever there is any uh, abrasion or any any cut on the back of that butcher or that dock worker then from the skin of the animal this bacillus anthracis enter inside the uh, skin of the or through those cut ends or those cuts or through abrasions these bacteria enter inside the skin of that dock worker and the butcher and that causes the cutaneous anthrax there okay so that's why it is seen that's why it is called as the hyde porter's disease that's why this is the reason why it is called as hyde porter's disease and this is characterized by malignant pustule what is malignant pustule this is a, uh, a type i mean it is a manifestation of the cutaneous anthrax in which there is formation of a black scar a coal colored scar is formed and around that scar a uh, edema is seen okay around that scar a uh, reddish edema is seen that is called as mal malignant pustule it is not a malignant condition but due to its appearance it is called as malignant pustule the second type of anthrax disease is the pulmonary anthrax and this pulmonary anthrax is called as the wool sorters disease now why it is called as wool sorters disease this is because it is seen in the workers of wool factory why because when the uh, workers of the wool factory separate the wool from the skin of the animals then this bacteria along with the wool uh, gets entry through the respiratory tract of those workers into the lungs okay and when they enter inside the lung they cause this pulmonary anthrax and hence they are called as wood wool sorters disease because when they sort the wool then the dust the, then the dust you know floats in the air and when they respire the those dusts containing the bacteria enter into the respiratory tract and cause this pulmonary anthrax so it is called as the wool sorters disease now uh, the uh, most uh, you know uh, unique feature of this pulmonary anthrax is the hemorrhagic pneumonia okay hemorrhagic pneumonia just like the malignant pustule which was the uh, characteristic feature of the cutaneous anthrax for the pulmonary anthrax the characteristic feature is the hemorrhagic pneumonia okay and next uh, what is uh, next type of anthrax is the intestinal anthrax when does that intestinal anthrax occur so when someone ingests a spore of the contaminated animal meat then there occurs intestinal anthrax and the characteristic feature of intestinal anthrax is the bloody diarrhea okay this is the characteristic feature of the intestinal anthrax now by that you must have known the roots of infection that is abrasion of skin or wounds on skin inhalation and ingestion these are the only three roots by which the bacillus anthracis can enter inside the body and 
cause manifestation of the disease according to the site of entry or route of entry then we have the clinical case how will we they give a how will uh, how will they give you the clinical case into the in the university exams so they will give you a history of exposure of course they will give you history of exposure of animal skin to the skin of patient if they want to ask you the uh, cutaneous anthrax then they will give you this history history of exposure of animal skin to the skin of the patient plus they will give you a history of malignant pustule with black scar this is the typical history they will give you in the clinical scenario based question if they want you if they want to ask you the cutaneous anthrax but if they want to ask you the pulmonary anthrax then they will give you the history of working in a wool factory where skin of animal is processed this is a typical history they will give you if they want to ask you pulmonary anthrax and if they want to ask you the intestinal anthrax then they will give you a history of in eating of animal meat which has died of anthrax okay so these are the three types of history by the history you have to identify which type of anthrax they are asking about and then you have to uh, you have to proceed to answer all the questions which are asked after that in that question paper so uh, by that you can uh, clinically diagnose the case by the history and the feature and then uh, we will see the lab diagnosis how will we diagnose the case of anthrax so lab diagnosis for the lab diagnosis we have a specimen collection first so based on the type of lien or type of manifestation we will collect the specimen like if it is cutaneous anthrax then we will collect the pus swab from the malignant pustule and if it is a pulmonary anthrax then we will uh, collect the sputum and if it is uh, you know if it is the intestinal anthrax then we will collect the gastric aspirate or the feces or the vomitus we can collect isn't it and blood can be collected as an extra edge okay because blood uh, will be necessary to demonstrate whether there is any septicemia or not because in this anthrax disease septicemia occurs very commonly in the late stages so for to differentiate that we have to collect the blood also we have to collect the blood as well okay so blood should also be collected then we will go for the direct detection how will we do the direct detection so for direct detection we have got the gram staining and the mcfadden reaction this mcfadden reaction is very important from mcq point of view but let's see the gram staining first so when we prepare a smear and we stain it with the gram stain then we see that there is gram positive brick shaped bacilli we can see okay this is the property we see with the bacillus anthracis and when we do the mcfadden reaction how do we do mcfadden reaction in the mcfadden reaction we use the gers polychrome methylene blue stain gers polychrome methylene blue stain for 30 seconds for 30 seconds we stain with the gers polychrome methylene blue stain and we uh, after 30 seconds we see that the capsules appears purple surrounding the blue bacilli so suppose this is blue bacilli here okay suppose this is the blue bacilli then the capsule will be appearing purple like this surrounding the bacilli okay we see the purple capsule surrounding the bacilli and this is the blue bacilli inside so this is the typical appearance that we see in case of the mcfadden reaction of the uh, if we want to see the bacillus anthracis it appears like this with the mcfadden reaction then we have culture also how can we culture so for culture we have got different culture media like we can uh, culture it on the nutrient agar blood agar gelatin stab agar and the solid media with penicillin solid media with the penicillin what is the coloring characteristic that we see when we do the culture on different media so colony characteristic is very important to remember here for anthrax it is very commonly very very commonly as in the mcqs so you must remember all these characteristic colonies of uh, in on different uh on different you know uh, culture media like on the nutrient agar they produce medusa head appearance under low power microscope this is very important this is very important to remember this medusa head appearance under low power microscope seen on the nutrient agar and this colony is produced by bacillus anthracis then on the blood agar they produce dry wrinkled non-hemolytic colonies mark the words non-hemolytic non-hemolytic colonies and 
dry wrinkled colonies are produced then on the gelatin step agar on the gelatin step agar on the gelatin step agar we see inverted faulty appearance why is this so this is because of slow liquefaction of the gelatin okay so bacillus anthracis causes liquefaction of gelatin and since that liquefaction is slow that's why we see inverted fault tree appearance that's why we see the inverted fault tree appearance so this is the findings on the gelatin step again and on the solid media with penicillin we see the string of pearl appearance we see the string of pearl appearance this is very very important out of all this string of pearl appearance is very very important okay this is most important out of all findings in the, in the colony characteristic this string of pearl appearance is very important that is seen in case of the solid media with penicillin that is seen with the solid media with penicillin that is the colony characteristic we see on the solid media with penicillin string of pearl appearance i am repeating this word again and again this is string of pearl appearance is very very important for the bacillus anthracis so these are the uh, colony characteristic that we see on four different types of culture media then we with the colony produced on the culture media we will produce a, a culture smear okay we will produce the culture smear we will produce the uh, then we gram stain the smear and on gram staining we will see long chain of gram positive bacilli with non bulging spore that is the bamboo stick appearance just like the bamboos like uh, bamboos are like this now you have seen bamboos they appear like this they appear like this and there is hollow insects in in this way they, there is hollow in this way in the center just they appear like this okay but they will not be red of course they are gram positive so they will not appear this uh, like red it will be it will all be purple colored it will all be purple colored okay it will not be red it will not be red it will not be red it will be purple okay so they give this bamboo stick appearance when they are gram stained when they are gram stained when you have seen the bamboo cutting in a sagittal section then you must have been seen uh, it appears like this just similar is the appearance of the bacillus anthracis if you will do it uh, uh, in your microbiology lab then you will be able to see this we were very able to see this bamboo stick appearance that was phenomenal appearance you when you see uh, then you will feel the then uh, you will have that feeling of seeing that bamboo stick appearance okay next what we can do is the molecular diagnosis the in the molecular diagnosis we can use the pcr for detection of the px01 and the px02 plasmid this plasmids once we detect we can confirm the diagnosis of the bacillus anthracis so this is all about the uh, anthrax next we will see about the anthracoids and the difference between the anthrax and the anthracoids which is very easy very very easy difference in the microbiology is the is between anthrax and anthracoids i will make it very easy so see that but till now this is all about uh, anthrax